members, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I'm Michael. I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sur- you, you survived the storm. Survived the storm. Um, not real serious damage. Uh, you know, I lost a little bit of siding and a, and a shingle. A shingle. A shingle. A yeah. shingle. <laughs> you lost shingle. <laughs> yeah. Um, pretty much all my fence. Yeah, I saw that back uh, there. Yeah. Uh, almost nice. lost a really big tree, which would have... That would, that would have been a problem, man. That tree is was huge. That would have been a problem for your neighbor. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It still makes it a problem for me. I mean, I have liability insurance, obviously. But, yeah, not I mean, good. As it is, you know, well under my deductible, so. Yeah. It's just, um, you know, slowly but surely. I mean, it took me two weeks to just pick up the front yard, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. At least you were able to do it yourself. I had to hire people with heavy equipment to clean yeah. up my yard. Yeah. <laughs> so... So for those who are unaware, um, we were like right in the path of Hurricane Sally um, yeah. as it came on shore. Uh, yeah. Like w- when it was when it was hitting us, part of it was still over water. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that, <that's, laughs> uh, that storm just dragged, man. Like yeah. it just set over us. I remember like as we were cleaning up the water in the house that night, like just thinking, it's like this has got to be over soon. Like I've been through my share of hurricanes and... This one just took forever, man. I was like, man, we got to be nearing the end here. We got to be nearing the end here. And it just felt like it was never coming. Yeah. Well, and that's, so that, that's the thing. Like, first off, they were all wrong, right? Oh, like, yeah. Nobody agreed on what it was going to do until the very last moment. And then they all agreed and they were all wrong. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, it came on a lot stronger than, than anticipated. And, uh, you know, we were talking the day before. Or, oh, yeah. Well, they, I mean, actually, well, that, I guess the night that, that night it was before, started, yeah. um, we were talking like, oh, well, we expect this to be kind of like Hurricane Danny, which, I don't know, 20 years ago or so, longer than that, 25 years ago, maybe. Something like um, that, yeah. Came and it just, uh, it sat over Mobile Bay for like three days yeah. and just churned. Yeah. Um, but it was but like, it was, it was a low, barely a hurricane. Yeah, it was a low level hurricane. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, you know, my brother and I were out playing basketball in it and, yeah, and stuff, yeah. and it was not a big deal. And that's kind of what we were we set didn't. up to expect. Yeah. And, uh, that's, that's not what we got at all. No, not at all, <laughs> um, man. So, and you know, 80 to a hundred mile an hour wind gusts, like that's a thing, like it sucks. I mean, yeah. that's, that's some really strong winds, but, um, it's nothing that the the area can't handle. Yeah, I mean, um, we see that with pop up thunderstorms. You exactly, know. and and even like a bad hurricane that comes by, you'll get those uh, even higher wind gusts sometimes, but yeah. you get like two or three hours of it. Yeah, exactly. And this, and we got like eighteen hours or something, something like that like of that. eighty to a hundred mile yeah. an hour wind gusts. It was moving <laughs> so slowly. Like I and remember so much rain because it rained mm-hmm. like all day the day before it got here and yeah. it just like the rain the rain's what really caused most of the problems too, or a mm-hmm. lot of them as yeah. far as the trees coming down. Mm-hmm. I mean the wind obviously was a factor, but mm-hmm. the ground was just so saturated. Like the roots were like just like exposed anyway yeah. from all the rain. It's like it didn't break trees. It pushed them down. They all yeah. uprooted. Oh, yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised if if like 5% of the trees in the southern half of the county were lost. Oh, that wouldn't surprise me a bit. Not after yeah. driving around. I mean, I've drove around a pretty good bit at this point, and mm-hmm. they're down. I mean, you're not going to recognize some of these areas now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it turned out to be pretty bad. Like, there was a point, um, I don't know, around 4 or 5 in the morning, yeah. Well, uh, for a couple of hours, actually, maybe from like three to six in the morning yeah. where it was howling outside. It was like a freight train was running down right next to my house yeah. for like three hours. Yeah. And uh, I was looking out um, the window. Of course, we lost power like way earlier oh, yeah. than that. We lost but, power at like 11 o'clock. <laughs> yeah. I, I lost power, I think, sometime between midnight and 1 a.m. Yeah. Um, and didn't get it back for five days or something like that. Yeah. But uh Anyway, yeah, I was looking out the window and, you know, and the lightning flashes and so forth and and, and you know, what little light I could see. Like, I had trees in my backyard that were practically horizontal. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> and they were whipping around, and uh, yeah. I, I think it might have been you that said it, it reminded you of the things outside of uh, used car the, lots yeah, or whatever. The, yeah. the, the tube man, man. <laughs> there were trees in my yard, that that's, and they all came down. All the mm -hmm. ones that looked like tube men were in my yard hours later, but yeah. I was watching them like, there's no way that tree makes it. Like, yeah. that, that tree's not making it. Yeah, like. <laughs> yeah it, was, it was kind of scary at some point. I was like, oh, God, yeah. please let this wind stop. And it didn't yeah. stop until almost noon. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it was insane, it was bad. man. So, but you know, we all made it out all right. Everybody's alive, you yeah. know. I've got some pretty serious damage, but nothing mm -hmm. that you know, we'll make it. <laughs> yeah, my parents lost like 30 something trees on their property. That's insane, man. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, now, um, just as a, an addendum and a little bit of a disclaimer there, yeah. I still don't have internet. Oh yeah, that's right. You um, don't have internet, so <laughs> power, but no internet. <laughs> probably when you hear this, it'll be the day after we record. I'll have to upload it from my office. Yeah, um, <laughs> where they have internet. <laughs> where they have internet, and uh, and actually they had internet back before power, but there's a generator there, so ah, yeah. You know. Um, but, uh, the other side of that is that means that I have not kept up real well with news. Yeah. Um, because well, I just don't have access to something anything. I was just going to mention to you, this storm, especially for people who are listening that maybe like, wow, I didn't even know this had like happened or went on like in other parts of the country. It's probably because it's been extremely underreported, especially when has you, it? it has, yes, by the mainstream media. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, this happened to us, and yeah. it was a big deal. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, it's definitely a big deal. I mean, there, are, yeah. there are people around me who had big trees come down on their houses. On houses, yeah. Um, oh yeah. And uh, and one of my good friends, um, his house is practically having to be rebuilt. Yeah. Uh, like almost from the ground up. Um, yeah. He had a, a thirty thousand pound tree come down on the back third of his house and and crush it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so. Like yeah. there's there's a lot of real serious damage out here. Yeah, I mean we're gonna be putting things back together for a while. Yeah, I mean, it's it's gonna be a minute. It's going and kind of like what what Ivan was. Mm -hmm. Like I mean it's it basically did the same thing to this area. Yeah. So well, and it took me two weeks to clean up my front yard, um, and I didn't have real bad damage. And it's gonna take me a month to clean up my backyard. Yeah. Um, which I'm less worried about because, well, it used to be nobody could see it, but now I don't have any fences. So. Yeah, all your fences are gone. Dude, I don't think, man, the fence companies in this county are going to make a killer, mm -hmm. man. Nobody's got fences left. You know, and actually I had thought about this in advance, like what are we going to talk about because I hadn't been able to keep up with news. And that's one of the things that I thought about is that like we can talk about the the broken window fallacy. Yeah. Like this is a thing that, that comes up now because there are some businesses down here that are going to do really oh, well over the next few months. Oh, yeah. Um. But the, and, and so it'll be touted by a lot of people as like, oh, well, this is, you know, an economic boon for the county and all these businesses are raking in record profits, you know, the tree removals and the, yeah. um, all these contractors and, you know, fence people and, and yard people and whatever else. Yeah. Um, but what's never considered is what that money is not being spent on because it's being spent on that. Yeah. Which kind of brings me to a question I've always kind of had about this, and this okay. may be a good time for you to address it. All right. Um, so, so the way you've, we've always approached the broken window deal is that that's money that would have been spent elsewhere in the economy. Mm -hmm. um, or uh, capital accumulation. Okay. Um, well, I that mean, kind of brings me to my question. Okay. So tons of this money is going to be spent by insurance companies. So how does that kind of factor into the idea that you know this that this money would have been spent somewhere else or somewhere better more productively anyway mm -hmm. i mean the insurance company wouldn't have spent it better well they might have i'm not sure how they're investing their money too yeah um because i imagine and i'm not entirely sure about the inner workings of the these kind of insurance companies yeah um, me either like at all but i'm learning because i've got to <laughs> yeah um but what i suspect is that they invest in other things to to you know generate income off of the premiums that are being spent with them yeah. uh, like i suspect that they work very similarly to banks and that they set some portion aside um, for their immediate needs hand, and yeah. then they invest the rest to try and, and, and generate additional revenue. Okay. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I but, don't know either, uh, but yeah. I would think so. And again, you know, the, but that investment does grow the economy. Well, yeah. Now, if that's actually the case, I can see how that would 
that would help the economy. Like, and even if be, they're not doing that, yeah. they have to keep that money somewhere, right? Yeah. So they're storing it in a bank, which is also which is doing that definitely. Yeah. Like without question, the banks are are, are investing. Doing that. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that's kind of the point. Like that's the part that's left out, and that's why why the attacks on capitalism don't make any sense. Like people yeah. complain about, oh, the, you know, these people just, just, just collecting money. Yeah. Right. And, but what do they, what do they do with that money? Yeah. I mean, like the people that are collecting money, they aren't just like stuffing it under a mattress or whatever. Well, and on top of that is, you know, everybody likes to, to talk about the rich. Oh, they, you know, um, they've got all this money. They've got all this money. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they really don't. A lot mm -hmm. of times that money is tied up in, like you said, investments and mm -hmm. stuff like that or, or in assets and things like that. Like that money's in, in any of the assets and stuff that they're purchasing, like, I mean, boats and yachts and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Like like somebody built that. Yeah, like, it's I mean, employing people, it's, definitely. Yeah, without question. Well, here's the, here's the important point, I think, is that, um, that you don't grow an economy without capital accumulation. Yeah. Like it, it is, it is capital savings that goes into the next step every time. Yeah. Right. So a company, you know, they produce a product or a service or whatever. Um, they sell it, they generate revenue, they pay their costs and anything extra is profit. And what they do with that profit is generally try to grow their business to stay ahead of competition, right? Yeah. And but what they need in order to grow their business is is capital accumulation so that they can invest in, you know, purchasing another building or expanding their infrastructure or whatever. But it requires capital to do all those things yeah. so that they can hire more people in the future or, or you know provide better or um, uh, more services or what have you. Yeah. And they need that capital in order to do that. Of course, like yeah. a lot of that's done with debt now, but yeah. um, even debt is is dependent on somebody accumulating capital. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because, yeah, because you couldn't incur that debt if somebody else didn't have that capital to begin with. Right. It still came from somewhere. Right. Yeah. Now, all too often these days, it comes from the Federal Reserve just adding zeros to various <laughs> accounts. But, oh, wow. <laughs> um, which is a problem in and of itself. Yeah. But, you know, the, the point remains that, you know, this is money that, um, in this case, and all these things that are being repaired, while the, the people that are repairing them are doing well, um, the people that are spending that money could have done other things with that money. Yeah. Um, rather than replacing what they had, they could be adding to what they had. Yeah. No, and that and that's sense. how you grow an economy. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. No, that, that makes nothing but sense. Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, beyond that, um, what else do we talk about, right? Yeah. Uh, it's hard to connect things to what, what we have going on down here. Of course, the big news that we missed um, was uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg passing uh, away. The notorious RBG. Yeah. <laughs> And this has created a whole new fight about these elections. Oh, um, it has. It's it should be interesting. Um, I mean, I don't know. I'm kind of I wouldn't say excited, but I'm I'm kind of glad to see that Trump's going to get to make another pick. Yeah. I mean, I I think that's that has its merits. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, and here's the thing about that is that you know the I uh, the fight is about balancing the court. Yeah. Oh, well, we need progressive justices and conservative justices, and, you know, we have to have an even number, roughly, of them. And oh, we that's don't, bull. We yeah. don't want to overbalance the court with conservatives or overbalance the court with progressives. I agree with both of those statements, actually. Yeah. Um, because well, that's, I don't want, I don't want that to be what the court's about. What you're trying to find with Supreme Court justices are people that are going to be constitutional. Well, that's not progressive or conservative, well, and but that's, constitutional. That's the problem is they all on all sides interject too much of their own opinions into the decisions. Mm -hmm. I mean, the constitution says what it says and it doesn't say what it doesn't say. Right. So, I mean, ideally, especially for people like us, mm -hmm. we'd want somebody that's just going to follow the constitution. Mm -hmm. I mean, because the Constitution gets it right, it's the problem is is it's not being followed yeah. at all. Well, like, and Ruth Bader Ginsburg was one of the worst of the uh, of the um, activist judges, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, there are a whole lot of opinions that she put out there that 
actually expressly state, well, um, this is the opinion that I'm offering because the intent of the legislature when they created this law was to do such and such. Well, that's not that's not what the question that's is. That's not what you're deciding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and even the idea that the uh, that the Supreme Court is the arbiter of the Constitution is a problem to begin with. Yeah. Um, I mean, go read it's section three, right? The judicial. Mm-hmm. Um, is section three, I think, of the Constitution. Anyway. I'm sure it is, but I, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it, they go executive, legislate, uh, legislative, judicial. So Okay, I, that I would make sense, work. yeah. Uh, but I don't remember what they call each of the various divisions, so it not, might not be section, it might be, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> the point is um, that in the description of what the Supreme Court is, uh, it doesn't say that it is the per, the the entity charged with interpreting the constitution yeah. that's that's not what the job is the job yeah. is to try cases related to the constitution now yeah. i i understand that through setting precedent and so forth that this is kind of a, a thing that is a result like you are interpreting law in a way by offering these opinions and that that will influence the way it is applied in the future but the idea wasn't that they are the arbiter of the constitution the idea was that they mostly actually what it says that they're supposed to do is to uh, be the court in cases um, between states where two states have a dispute that needs to be settled um, then it's the supreme court's uh, jurisdiction Um, when uh, you know citizens within a state have uh, a case against the state the Supreme Court's supposed to have the jurisdiction. Mm-hmm. When um, a foreign entity has a case against a state or against the United States or anything that arises as disputes under treaties and various laws that the, um, like constitutional laws, yeah. it doesn't seem like you should have to say that, but <laughs> well, constitutional well, yeah. laws that the legislature enacts, that's where the Supreme Court comes in. Yeah, um, They aren't the interpreter of the Constitution. Yeah. Well, and that makes a lot of sense if you think back to how the how we were set up initially, you mm-hmm. know, because I mean we were supposed to be like independent states, yeah. But I mean that's been long gone now. Yeah, since the Civil, Civil War, War ended an that. into that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so uh, you know the the other thing is that Ruth Bader Ginsburg, like the actual fight about whether Trump should have should nominate some. And so this is, this is yeah. the other thing well, where there's is, some confusion, right? Yeah. Like the president doesn't appoint court justices. The, the president yeah. nominates court justices. The, the Senate appoints them. Yeah. They confirm them and then appoint them. Yeah. Um, so there's no reason, none whatsoever that Trump shouldn't recommend a justice. Now the, the Senate can either confirm them or not. But so, everybody still has their job to so do. So what about what about deathbed wishes? Like that's oh. that's written into the constitution somewhere, right? Like well, I know, know I, I know I've heard this before that, you know. I, I actually I reviewed it today. Did you? <laughs> I reviewed it today and I, I didn't I didn't see that you clause. Find, oh man, yeah. like I, I could have swore it was there though. Um, like besides the fact that it's just a, <laughs> a bunch of bunk anyway. Yeah. Um I so I have a hard time imagining Ruth Bader Ginsburg on her deathbed, surrounded by her family, instead of telling her grandkids how much she, how proud she is of them, and how much she loves everybody and whatever. That yeah. she says, "Just make sure that everybody knows that I don't want Trump to appoint my replacement. This is the, this is my last wish. Yeah. This is the what I'm going to use one of my final breaths to say yeah. is that I don't want Trump to replace me." No, nah, I don't think so. Uh, and the problem with and he sure is she sure as hell didn't say it to Maisie Hirono. <laughs> wow, yeah. you don't know you weren't in the room. That's true. That's true. I wasn't but, there. No, the the truth of it is though, if she was seriously that concerned about about Trump being or about the next president being the one, she should have stepped down under Obama. Um, and that really kind of shows you like how mm-hmm. how naked the power is like that they just want the power yeah because well she was sure that hillary was gonna win that wow <laughs> well she should have stepped down way before that though like mm-hmm. i mean about mid uh, through his second term somewhere she should have stepped down and been like all right there's a good chance that you know this is that we're gonna end up with a republic in the next cycle mm-hmm. it's my time to step down yeah but why would you want to walk away from that power? Yeah. And that's that's because I mean that's you know that's how she felt about it. Like mm-hmm. I mean that's that's the only thing that makes sense. Yeah. 
Um, if she was that concerned about there being another, about somebody else making the appointment, that's mm-hmm. uh, that was a fixable problem. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. But you know, there's a there's a nice income connected with being a Supreme Court justice. And well, like I say, that that and just the power of yeah. you know that responsibility and that you know mm-hmm. because there there's definitely always been for a long time now at least a lot of celebrity around here. I mean, that, that's like, true. I mean, which is weird because. Because Sandra Day O'Connor was the real trailblazer, wasn't she? Maybe I'm not sure. I, I think so. I, I mean, it's I not it's not really relevant, I <laughs> yeah. guess. But um, that there's another thing, another point to make about that power, though, and you know, referring back to them being arbiters of the Constitution or them not being arbiters of the Constitution, yeah. is that one of the things that we hear all the time from all courts, not just the Supreme Court, but from all courts, is that they made this ruling. Yeah. They made this ruling. And just think about that word for a moment. Like, that should, you know, get your hackles up right to begin with. Yeah. Um, Because if you're making a ruling, you're a ruler. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Uh, um, What what courts offer are opinions. Um, And it's it's up to the people whether to support that opinion or not. Yeah. Like this is the thing that's left out all the time when we talk about our government generally is that the, um, you have the, the three branches and they're co-equal branches supposedly. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but the truth is that we never talk about the people. The people are the real power. I mean, it, and it says right there that, you know, the, the whole goal was to, um, be representative of the people that, that these are, this is a representation of the people. Yeah. Um, the, the, the real power lies in the people uh, <laughs> of the United States. And we've forgotten about that entirely. Oh, and that's the, out the window. Yeah. yeah. And of course the, the house of representatives is supposed to be the representative of the people, but I don't feel like they really fill that role anymore. Mm. Um, and the Senate was supposed to be the representative of the States, but they definitely don't fill that role anymore <laughs> because they are now elected by popular vote in the States instead of being appointed or selected in whatever way they wanted by the state senates or yeah. legislatures. Yeah. Which was the original, um, which was the idea because we weren't a democracy. Like we were supposed to be yeah. independent states that came together to make the United States. Yeah. But states were supposed to be able to act on their own. Yeah. And the power of the federal government was supposed to be outward facing. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, um, that it, it, the federal government represented the states as a body to other um, on sovereignties. The world stage. Yeah. 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 Um, and then of course the, you know, the other sideline, and this was actually as much the judicial, the, what we talked about at the beginning, the judicial job really is to, to, um, mediate between states. Yeah. Um, but the, yeah, the idea of the federal government wasn't to be the central power. It was, the idea was that it was a, a um, a representative of the states as a group to outside powers. Yeah. Well, and this is kind of how I kind of found my way to anarcho-capitalism or whatever you want to call it. Is Are you there? I'm pretty close, man. Like, I'm <laughs> like really, really pretty close. Because, just because the Constitution has failed us so bad. Yeah. Because, like, I mean, my argument before has always been is that, you know, the Constitution got it right. We just screwed it up. But I think in the end, it's destined to fail. Like, because I mean, I, you read through the constitution and you just, I can't find a whole lot wrong with it other than that. It just doesn't work. Yeah. Well, I think it is in the nature of government to grow, accumulate power. And expand. Actually. Yeah. I think that, and the more I've been reading the, um, democracy, the God that failed. Yeah. Um, it's really kind of seeped in. I like, I like this idea of looking at the democratic Republic as the, as the, um, publicly owned government versus the monarchy is the privately owned government. Yeah. Um, and I, I would actually go back and say that it's in the nature of a democratic republic, <clears throat> a, a publicly owned government, to grow, accumulate power, um, eventually suppress and oppress the, the yeah. people. Yeah. Um, not that those things don't exist in a monarchy, but, but a, um, a privately owned government has an incentive to... Um, to uh, stay within itself, essentially. Yeah. Um, and a, a publicly owned government d- 
doesn't really. Yeah. Um, everybody that is in has power in a publicly owned government in a democratic republic, they they don't actually like none of this actually belongs to them. They only have the spoils of government for as long as they're in government. So they're actually incentivized to use as much as they can while they can. <laughs> yeah, while they're there. Um, instead of to uh, to grow it. Take take as much as you can yeah. while you're there, and yeah. then leave. <laughs> yeah. Whereas a monarchy, you are incentivized to grow, um, to to grow what you control in the sense that like it's it's an incentive to grow the economy of the entire of your entire sovereignty. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's an incentive to, uh, respect other people's rights because in the end, your rights are based in the same place as theirs. Yeah. Um, and you know, the, the kind of the class distinction, um, keeps, keeps everybody chugging along in the same way. And it, but the, the point is the class distinction also makes the lower classes, um, more careful about what they allow their government to do. Yeah. And here, like anybody can be in the government, that power yeah, at some point. Exactly. So why do you want to take the power away when you might be able to wield it someday? Yeah. As, as even as unlikely as it may be. Yeah. It's yeah. like buying lottery tickets, right? I, yeah. You know. I might hit the lottery one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I think that though, that it is in the nature of government to try and consolidate and accumulate power. Yeah. And um, and this is a good proof because they did everything. Well, not everything. I don't think. I mean, there are some flaws in the Constitution. I would say, but yeah. um, they they went farther than anybody had before in trying to limit that power. Yeah, and I mean, and limit that growth, and it did not work. Yeah, I mean, it's explicitly, explicitly written in there. Like mm -hmm. this is this is what we're we're tying the government down. Yeah, and I mean, it, it just hadn't worked. I and mean, now we're the biggest government in the history of mankind. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, it it, it doesn't work, yeah. and that's that's kind of what leads me down that road. Mm -hmm. To <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, no, I, and I completely understand. I, so maybe that's where to focus. Like we talk about, we have our three principles um, of uh, personal liberty, uh, free enterprise, and self government. Yeah. Um, but they're really an embodiment of what the there there are things that we can point to specifically that what libertarianism is really about. Yeah. Um, and what libertarianism is really about is that first one as much as anything else. The yeah. other two are what I would say are side effects of personal liberty. Yeah. If everybody's allowed out there making their own choices, then the result is a free market economy. Yeah. Um, the result is self-government. The Everything kind of falls into that first one yeah. where – and. You know, we're as, again defining liberty as as um, as freedom plus morality. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, um, but the this is what we try and focus on, and this is what I try and get other people to focus on when I get into political discussions. Yeah. Is that a a huge percentage of the problems that we face on a day to day basis are the result of government intervention. Yeah. Uh, if you look at the healthcare system, for example, um, every time they try and, and fix the healthcare system, every time the government gets involved a little bit more, it just accelerates the demise of the healthcare system. Yeah. Like, I mean, think about how much worse things have gotten since um, the Affordable Care Act. Yeah. Um, and things were going badly already. And oh, why yeah. were they going badly already? And I, I have some personal experience with this from the ambulance company that I used to work for, yeah. um, which I, I started off as an EMT, but I moved into the office doing insurance billing. Um, and we already had a lot of problems with primarily Medicare and Medicaid. Yeah. The two government run insurance companies. Because you weren't getting no money from them. Because I wasn't getting any money out of them. Yeah. And in the end, um, and Medicaid was even worse than Medicare, although Medicare had a bunch of problems as well. So Medicare decides on what they think that you should be charging for a service and you can't charge any more than that. Yeah. That's just what it like, is. This yeah. is what you get. And so there are a whole bunch of services in emergency medicine where what they offered for the service is less than it cost you to do it. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and you can't keep a business running. Gonna say, that you're way. not going to stay afloat like that. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, it's emergency services. So like when you get an emergency call, you run it no matter what, but there's a, Actually, probably 90% of what um, ambulance companies do is non-emergency transports. It's yeah. just like people that need to have be under observation in case something happens from point A to point B. Yeah. Um, well, and some of those people just need the transportation. Need the, can't, can't just hop in a car and go somewhere. 
Well, I'm guessing. I mean, I, no, no. Um, you don't get an ambulance unless you need some. You might need some kind of medical intervention in between. Otherwise, okay. get a cab. Well, yeah, no, I'm not talking about like I'm not talking about like cab rides. I'm just talking about like, well, yeah, I guess like what you're saying, like, I mean, they're still hooked up to IVs and crap like that. Yeah, or that they have a serious problem that could require some specialized intervention in between. Yeah. Um, I mean, a lot of a lot of what we did actually was uh, people that had um, some kind were in some version of renal failure, and okay. so we were taking them back and forth to dialysis. Yeah. But there's a whole lot of complications that come with that. Yeah. Um, and so we needed to be there in case you needed some kind of real medical intervention that you couldn't get in the back of a cab. I got you. Um, or, you know, that you needed something immediately. You couldn't just wait for somebody to take you to the hospital necessarily. Yeah. So that's why we were doing the transport. And you had yeah. to justify it to the insurance company. And yeah. and this was one of the things that I enjoyed about working in, in the, the office um, yeah. as opposed to working on the ambulance is that it was a whole bunch of logic games. Yeah. You get on the phone with these people and you would, you know, talk about the patient, the particular conditions, get them to agree that you know, of, to some aspect of it, and then read their policy back to them and say, so see, you, you should this, be paying for this. Yeah, you know, like, this is why know. it's covered. Yeah. Um, and the, that was fun yeah. <laughs> for, for me. <laughs> I can imagine you were probably pretty good at it, too. <laughs> I did all right. Um, not good enough, though, obviously, because yeah. that, uh, that business eventually shuttered because there was like yeah. a quarter million dollars in Medicaid payments that we could never collect. Yeah. And we'd spent, um, you know, six figures trying to collect it. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, between time and attorneys and, uh, you know, all this discovery stuff and so on. Yeah. So, um, you know, eventually it closed down anyway. And like I said, there were already Medicare issues where they you got paid less than it cost you to do things and and so on. And so. it is something that's really frustrating, especially when you think about the government as, you know, they can print their own money anyway. So the, the fact that you're in a situation where you're dealing with government entities that owe private businesses money, mm -hmm. they can't collect it, and all they got to do is print it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, like seriously, like no, I mean, but they only print it for the bankers, you see. Yeah, ex well, I get that, but at the same time, it's just <laughs> we it's, weren't big enough fish. We weren't lobbying yeah. well. Enough. <laughs> Apparently not, because, but but it is frustrating that you know a private business can go under because it can't collect what it's owed from the government. Yeah, I mean that's that's insanity, mm -hmm. and kind of goes to the point where where you were going with the whole you know. Well, anything the government touches is going to go to crap. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And like, and that's the reason that healthcare is as bad as it is and that people are wanting to go to a more socialized system mm -hmm. is because it's already so bad and they don't realize how it got as bad as it is. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, you know, it, it's literally like, not literally, I, literally <laughs> means figuratively now, I guess, but, yeah. um, it, it's like trying to put out a fire with gasoline. Yeah, yeah. Like the the fire was started with gasoline and you think that the answer is to add more gasoline. Yeah. If we just add <laughs> enough gasoline, maybe it'll use up all the oxygen and it'll go out. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, and that seems to be the approach that we have to a lot of these, a lot of the problems in society is that it was a problem created by government intervention in the first place. And for whatever reason, and I think you're right. It's mostly that people don't understand well, that the origin was government intervention in the first place. And that's where our job as libertarians is so important, mm -hmm. like is to educate people. And that's something that Ron Paul done such a good job of mm -hmm. is, is educate people. Government is the reason we have these problems mm -hmm. uh, because most people just don't know. It, yeah. It's not that they don't, it's not that they don't care and it's not that they're not paying attention. They just don't know. And yeah. the media does, a, a, does everyone a huge disservice by mm -hmm. taking cover for the government. Yeah. Well, um, and you have an education system almost entirely run by run the government. Run by the government. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's you're in a system that's <clears throat> you're in a, a in a situation that's just doomed to fail. Mm -hmm. But th but I do believe that's our job as libertarians to educate, and that's part of what this podcast is about: is educating people on this and that that not only is government just bad, this is why government is bad. Yeah, and what I find a lot of times is that people just don't take that next step. Yeah, they run right up to the point where the government is the cause, but they don't, they don't yeah. look at that part of it. Yeah. Take the, um, the, you know, the, the capitalist problem of the bank bailouts. Yeah. Right. It's always the capitalists, those greedy capitalists that took all that government money. They didn't take the government money. They were given the government money by yeah. whom? 
<laughs> right? The government. The government, right? You know, it was the government that did that. It wasn't yeah. the capitalists. Yeah, and exactly. and actually the problems that that led to the, you know, the what led to the problems that the government needed to bail them out of needed, yeah. you know, right. yeah. scare quotes. Yeah. Using the quote, um, yeah. That it was government intervention also. Yeah, right? Like, <laughs> all of this was a creation of government. Mm -hmm. So so they create a problem. They s claim to have the answer to the problem, and people are buying it. Yeah. And even when people are looking at it real seriously, like, uh, uh, so I don't, I don't know how many out there have read The Shock Doctrine. Um, if you haven't, you should. Uh, it's, it's actually very insightful. But the author, Naomi Klein, who is talking about um, disaster capitalism is, is what it's about. We're taking yeah. advantage of crises um, to privatize in the government speak privatize, not, yeah. not the way we think of privatization. Yeah. Um, but More like government takeover. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, private, it's the fascist version. It's private <laughs> en entities getting payouts from the government to do something gotcha. specific, you know, yeah. um, not private entities being reliant on the profit loss system and the free market to either make their way or not. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, taking advantage of crises to, um, to insert themselves to privatize and, or, f you know, in a fascistic way, yeah. uh, these things and, uh, and taking advantage of people and making things a lot worse. And so she keeps talking about these capitalists that are going in there and they're doing this. And, but in, in almost every case, like it is the government that caused the crisis in the first place. And it is the government that invited the capitalists in to do these things. And in a lot of cases, it's the government that assigned particular businesses to do these particular things. <laughs> yeah. Right. But she doesn't ever take that next step and blame the government for any of this. It's always yeah. the capitalists. Yeah. So. Yeah, but the capitalists are just taking advantage of the opportunities that are being given to them, and that's what you do. Yeah. You and I would do the same oh, thing. Yeah. Yeah, like absolutely. I complain about the government giving out money, but I didn't like send back my twelve hundred dollar check in the um, in the <laughs> COVID crisis. No, oh, no, I wouldn't bother gum with it. <laughs> <laughs> just probably a really good, yeah, a really like, good investment for that. Uh, I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> um. And, you know, and that leads us to the next thing that I kind of want to talk about, because there's so much discussion about these elections coming up oh, and, yeah. and people are, are like losing their minds over this in, thing well, too. People are in their corners. I'll tell you. Oh, that. well, that's absolutely true. And that's gotten worse and worse and worse every time. Man. Um, and that's exactly the problem. And because the truth is it, let me set everybody's mind at ease or make you <laughs> feel that much worse. It's going to do yeah. one of these, one of the two things. It doesn't matter who we elect. Yeah. Who's the it's, president really has very little impact on the operation of the government when it comes down to it. Yeah. Because well, the people that are running the government, yeah. you never voted for and you probably don't know their names. Yeah. Well, that, and I think Trump is the biggest, like, should have been the biggest one to wake people up of that. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, he ran to disrupt. I mean, he ran as, I'm going to go in and I'm going to disrupt and blah, blah, blah. And the internal workings of the government have fought tirelessly, tirelessly to get rid of him in mm -hmm. every way, shape, imaginable. Um, yeah. I mean, if you really want to go down the conspiracy rabbit hole, I mean, as far as blowing this whole COVID thing up. Yeah. I mean, you you just, <laughs> the list goes on and on. A friend of mine last night called it the election infection. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I mean, that's, like I say, conspiracy theory, but like, that's pretty mainstream thought. Like, I mean, I don't talk to much of anybody that doesn't think this is all going to be over come election time. Yeah. Well, and it's, you know, there are some people that would dispute that. And so uh, let me clarify. Yeah. When, when we make a statement like that, we're not saying that there won't be an, uh, a COVID virus anymore after oh, well, the yeah. election. Yeah. What we're saying is them trying to scare everybody about it will the, end. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, they'll finally accept that the global pandemic, if it ever really existed, yeah. isn't there anymore. Yeah. I mean, at some point you have to accept that this isn't a global pandemic anymore. Like people are sick. Yeah. Sure. Oh, people yeah. are still getting sick. Sure. Yeah. People aren't dying anywhere yeah. close to the rates that they were six months ago. Yeah. Nowhere close. Like, yeah. I mean, it's unreal if you really look at the charts. If you look at the numbers, yeah. And um, and even then, we're still you know finding more and more that it seems like uh, there's been a lot of um, deaths attributed to COVID that weren't really uh, the result of COVID. Um, 
because we incentivized people here to report COVID deaths. Yeah. Like we incentivized a bunch of medical facilities to report COVID deaths because the more COVID deaths they reported, the more money they got. Exactly. <laughs> um, but the, the point is that the, and, and that's what all of this is about. The, the system of the parties and so forth. It's all about dividing you, you and me. It's about yeah. dividing us down here. The, the people. Yeah. The, the regular people, the, um, well, Political elite, they don't care. It yeah. doesn't really matter to them who's in that office. Yeah. Because it doesn't change the way they do business really in any significant way. Well, and it's like when you look at the difference between, I know Jeb Bush didn't do that well, but like you look at the <laughs> difference. Clap. Yeah, right. <laughs> but you look at the difference between like a Jeb Bush and a Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, they will fight with each other tooth and nail. But the policy differences aren't that big, yeah. If at all, like yeah. I mean, well, okay. So Biden and Trump, um, you know, one of the big differences is, uh, you know, Trump wants to start a war with Iran, and Biden yeah. wants to start a war with Russia. Yeah. All really, Biden's doing is skipping the middleman. Yeah. Right. Because I mean, that's where you're ending up. Yeah. Yeah. You end up with Iran. You end up with <laughs> Iran. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And he's just trying to support the Obama thing um, with the uh, JCPOA. Yeah. Um, the Iran nuclear deal. Yeah. And that is one of the three things that Obama did in office that I approve of, actually. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so I, I wish we were back in that deal, too. I do think that it made the world a safer place yeah. from us, mostly. <laughs> yeah. um, but, uh, you know, there's it's it's only political. It doesn't there. There's no consideration of end goals or anything. It's because it, both groups are still trying to just maintain and expand the American empire. Well, exactly. And that that's uh, it, at the end of the day that we lose anyway, because no matter who wins, the government gets bigger. Yes. Like the government's not going to contract and they're a Republican mm -hmm. or a Democrat, regardless of what the Republicans tell you when they're campaigning. Oh, we're mm -hmm. small government conservatives and blah, blah, blah. They still want to grow that government just as much as the other guy, just in different areas. Yeah. It's funny that the, the things that people focus on, um, well, and it's not even the things that people focus on anymore. I mean, it's, like, it's hard to say that the Democrats are about uh, civil liberties anymore. Oh, yeah. That's um, kind of went out the window. But, I mean, there are traditional Democrats that still believe in these things. Yeah. And what's funny about it is that, like, if you actually believe in, in civil liberties and, and you know, the government staying out of your private life. Yeah. You need to vote libertarian, not Democrat. Oh. And, and if you believe in small government, if you believe that you actually, it's the same thing, right? Yeah. Like yeah. if you want the government out of your day to day life, yeah. you don't need to be voting Republican. You need to be voting libertarian. Absolutely. And I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm having a hard time supporting our candidates this yeah. time around, but the philosophy is still there. I just think that they're focused on the wrong things, but well, and that's what's so frustrating about it is because we need we need a good voice in the liberty movement. Mm -hmm. And I mean, and that's supposed to be whoever we're putting up every four years. I yeah. mean, that's who that's supposed to be. That's supposed to be our spokesperson yeah. for, for our position. And it's, it's very frustrating when you have a Gary Johnson or what, uh, Jorgensen like we have now, mm -hmm. who I who I do support and I do do like, but... They're just, they're not doing what you know they can do. They're not taking this philosophy to the people in a manner that it can be done in. Yeah. They're trying to appeal to votes. Yeah. And that, that's not the way to win. I mean, you're not going to win anyway. So what mm -hmm. you want to do is start a movement like mm -hmm. what Ron Paul did. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I, I know I mentioned one time on the podcast and I kind of felt bad after the podcast was over that, you know, I asked you like, what had Ron Paul done? Um, but the truth is Ron Paul started a movement. And, and it was, it was a big movement in its time. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's, that's what we need now. We need somebody else with that voice that can do that. Yeah. And, and we don't have it. I mean, it's not out there right now. Um, I'm hoping we find it, but it's, it's not there. Yeah. We need a, a Ron Paul, a Harry Brown, Harry uh, Brown, another good yeah. one. Absolutely. Um, somebody who is, is uncompromising. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, that can take, that can take the position that on its face looks kind of like mm -hmm. with the stupid things libertarians say, yeah. that can take that bat, that position that on its face looks bad mm -hmm. and convince people that it's right yeah. because it is. Yeah. Yeah. You know. I mean, just appealing down to, and so I, I actually had a political discussion of maybe a month ago, um, with somebody who doesn't believe in morality and when i ran into that I, like i had a real problem uh, <laughs> making an argument because uh, like a lot of 
a lot of what I say about why libertarianism is right is yeah. based in morality. Yeah. And it's, you know, based around the idea of who controls your life. Yeah. Um, and, and this is what we try to promote though. I mean, whether you believe in morality or not, I mean, I would hope that at the very least that you think, uh, that you have, should have a more of a say in your life than anybody else. Absolutely. And that that's, that's what we're, that's what we're, promote that's yeah. what all of this that's, is about that's what the idea is yeah yeah um you know that you should be able to make your own choices about your life yeah as long as they don't interfere with other people's equal rights to do the same exactly and, you know that's the secondary part and that's where you run into some gray area definitely yeah um and you know that's the that's the point of a court system private yeah. court system i yeah. would say but <laughs> the point of a court system is to yeah. try and mediate on the boundaries yeah. but the the core of the philosophy is that you should be able to make your own choices about your life absolutely yeah and have the responsibility that if you do infringe on somebody else's that ideally you do the right thing mm -hmm. you know whatever that may be yeah that you, you know. that you make it equal in some way yeah absolutely balance the balance the ledger yeah mm -hmm. absolutely um well, uh, we've gone like 45 minutes with we've nothing to even, talk about. <laughs> yeah, right? I don't even think we've really hit on your notes. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, one, we talked about it a little bit. Okay, yeah, yeah. We should definitely talk about the, the police thing yeah. here. All right, so this is a this is something that we've run into here. And, uh, you know, we, we've been pretty critical of law enforcement on this podcast and will continue to be. Um, not, you know, not as a core philosophy, but as the... As we want them to do better. As a de facto, like the, what they're actually doing. Yeah. Right? Well, and, and in a way that, like, these are fixable problems that should be addressed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I mean, I don't hate police to hate police. I yeah. hate police because I want them to be good. I want yeah. them to do the right things. Yeah. And which kind of And I want them us... to be accountable. Uh, and yeah, that more would, than anything. That would be, yeah, yeah, that would be the driving force to having them do the right things. Absolutely. Is if they're accountable when they do the wrong things. Exactly. Um, but so here's the situation that we've run into here. Like, we had some real serious damage down here due to the storm. Yeah. Um, and so there were some, uh, there were a bunch, actually, of major intersections down here uh, with no power. Yeah. So traffic lights down on, like... On four um, lanes. Yeah, on four lanes uh, yeah. and in confusing junctions and so oh, forth, yeah, like junctions the with the interstate. and Yeah, like, like some crazy stuff. Like yeah. that are, That's new to us, at least, like the diamond interchange. Like that's that's new to us down here. And yeah. let me tell you, with no power. <laughs> yeah, and it, it sucks with, with power. Yeah. <laughs> um, at least if you're not used to it. I have a hard time yeah. believing that this is the most efficient way to do this, but whatever. Yeah. I mean, granting that, it's, yeah. it's already confusing. And then without power, it kind of became a free-for-all. Yeah. I mean, like everybody understands that this is supposed to be a four way stop. Yeah. But who gets to go next when it's packed in all directions? Exactly. And um, so I, I don't know if there were any real serious accidents or anything. I kind of doubt it because everybody was, had to come to a complete stop before they did anything well, anyway. But I, I'll tell you the one there was a, there's an intersection in particular that's close to my house that is notorious for bad accidents. Like, mm -hmm. and I've been hearing ambulances run up and down the roads all the time. I don't think anybody's actually died because I would have heard about that, mm -hmm. but there has definitely been wrecks at that intersection yeah. it went with the, when we were going through the powers back pretty well now, mm -hmm. but when the power, but we were was without out, power for like a week. We were, yeah, we were that. I know pati the particular intersection I'm thinking about was about a week mm -hmm. with no power. Yeah. There were a bunch of these intersections that even when they got power back, they were just all blinking red lights. Yeah. Yeah. They, they didn't they actually have traffic signals. Yeah. Um, and so anyway, but here's the point. Yeah. Um, uh, that you have your law enforcement whose motto is to serve and protect or protect and serve. I forget what order yeah. it comes in. Um, I got protect and serve down here, which means it's probably backwards. <laughs> Maybe. Doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, so I was driving around during that first week yeah. and um, I kept coming across uh, police officers that were posted um, checking for speeders. Yeah, yeah. Hid, hid behind the debris that's stacked yeah. all along the side of the roads. Yeah. They've got all kinds of places to hide all of a sudden. Yeah. Like I want to speed on this road that's got debris everywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, I'm a speeder. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, they were posted up all over the place uh, gunning people. Yeah. Um, and pulling people over for speeding and handing out tickets. And meanwhile, there's nobody at these major intersections. Yeah. 
And it just seems like if your job was to serve and protect rather than the point that I make all the time, which is their real job is to generate revenue for the, for the municipality. They're, they're tax collectors. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure there's a lot of damage to a bunch of government buildings and I'm sure that they need some money right now. And so they're out there uh, giving, t- giving out tickets instead of sitting at intersections directing yeah. traffic. Yeah. And that, like I say, I don't think that's the job of police to do nothing but direct traffic. But when we were in a crisis, because it was a crisis, mm-hmm. like what we were in, at least these major intersections, put somebody out there. Yeah. Because, I mean, you want to talk about lives being at risk. That's where the most lives were at risk, without question. Because mm-hmm. I came through some of those intersections a few times, and I was like, man, I hope I get through this. Yeah. <laughs> like, seriously, because yeah. like it was, it was that chaotic and that bad. Yeah, there were definitely, I had a few times where I had to slam on the brakes because somebody decided that they didn't want to wait their turn. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. Well, and I think a lot of times, you hit a point, especially in the four-lane intersections, where like even if you're trying to everybody's trying to do the right thing Mm -hmm. sometimes you just don't know (laughs) yeah yeah whose turn is it yeah and then everybody kind of goes at once exactly yeah yeah i saw that too so um this was a real frustration of mine during this during this period and like uh, like liberty larry said everything's more or less back to normal now Except yeah. I still don't have internet. But as far as power is concerned, power has been restored most much. places. The last Although person, there's still some places in my neighborhood yeah. where you like, there's still trees laying across the road in places. Oh yeah, there there is. There's a few roads around me that it takes some maneuvering to get around, like where they yeah. like cleared it but not cleared it all the way. Yeah. Um. And the last person I knew directly that didn't have power got it last night. Okay. So um. Like I say, it's, I'm, I know there's still people out there that don't have it. So, I mean, it's still out there, but it's not as predominant as it was. Yeah. Remember, everybody, this has been almost two weeks since the yeah. storm came through. Yeah. No and joke. we're prepared for this, except for I think that we, like a bunch of our power uh, trucks yeah. were in uh, Lake Charles <laughs> right? helping out Louisiana <laughs> yeah. while the storm came through here. But, um, anyway, still. yeah, it, it, we're, we're mostly prepared for this kind of thing. I remember we had a, a when I was living in Atlanta, we had a Hurricane Opal come through yeah. and uh hurricane opal wasn't even really a hurricane by the time it got to atlanta it wasn't a real right. severe storm um i was out playing in that too <laughs> yeah but uh anyway um we lost power for four days Whoa. and I, I was blown away by this and you know because i was like i've been through much more severe storms in um in south alabama on the coast yeah and we had uh power back like the next day yeah absolutely and, uh, and this is what we're used to mostly down here because they're just ready for it. There's backup system after backup system and they have, uh, you know, a stockpile of spare parts and they're, and personnel, they're ready to go. Like they've yeah. got the personnel. Oh, right and they there. have the mutual aid agreements with, uh, you with know, neighbors. Yeah. Lo- yeah. Local or, you know, other, um, yeah. power companies and so forth. And so, uh, losing power for up to two weeks <laughs> here is a big deal. Oh yeah. Like does something happen? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Um, so Anyway, uh, I, I mean, I guess we can kind of wrap up there. Um, just uh, remembering that, um, just a just another reminder, though, that the law enforcement's real job, <laughs> municipal law enforcement particularly's real job, is to collect money for the mus- municipality, collect not to taxes. actually help you out in any way. Yep. And uh, and it's sad, but because it shouldn't be that way. But yeah, that's the world we live in. Yeah, I I actually really would love to get some numbers together. As somebody that has access to this and what feels like doing the statistics, I would love to know um, how many police officers it takes collecting um, or handing out tickets to cover their own salaries. That would be interesting. <laughs> you could pull it too. You could yeah. figure it out. Yeah, I like sometimes I think that they probably. They, they probably are actually there, essentially collecting their, their own salary. salary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, okay, um, so we'll wrap it up, and hopefully, hopefully, I will get internet sometime soon, and I'll have more access to news, and we'll we'll go into well, something. A little and we can get this one events. out there, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, let, I hope y'all hear this. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you hear it soon. I'll be, at, I'll be at my office tomorrow. I'll definitely get it uploaded. They won't mind if I, if I upload from there. Cool. Um, and, uh, let's check real quick. <laughs> quick internet check. <laughs> yep. Still don't have internet. Still ain't there. Actually, um, I looked yesterday at the schedule and they don't even have internet restor- restoration scheduled for my grid yet. <laughs> uh, Oh, and, uh, but 
Mediacom is the best internet company. And I will continue to say that until my internet comes back. And then you can hear what I really think. <laughs> All right. Um, and uh, so we'll be back. We plan to be back in a week unless another storm comes through here. Oh, man. I won't even say it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will lose that tree in my backyard if another storm no comes joke. through. No joke. Um, so uh, we plan to be back in a week. Um, in uh, the meantime, uh, you know, follow us on Facebook and subscribe on iTunes and Podbean. Uh, like and share. Um, like the page. There's the Liberty Mike page on Facebook. Yep. Um, like that or follow that or whatever you do to business pages on Facebook. Cause remember Facebook is hiding all my, my tags to everybody <laughs> oh, when, I, right. when I send stuff out. Um, I am going to find an alternative. I really think I'm seriously going to move, uh, some of our stuff to mines. I'll probably end up doing both, but, um, eh, I'm down, you know, Minds I'm down is to put us on as they're... many yeah. in many social media networks as you want. Well, it, when you want to start taking one, over, putting... one of them's <laughs> got to be better than Facebook because yeah. I hate Facebook. When and you want to ta- start taking over managing a bunch of those, then we can we can add more. Um, but uh, it, yeah, and somebody asked me about uh, was it Stitcher? I think it was Stitcher. But it, anyway, one of those other podcast companies, and I, I started looking into it, and there's like. You have to sign away all this stuff and allow them to oh, append yeah. ads to your podcast and yeah, we ain't doing all, all kinds that. of stuff. So I'm yeah, I'm not yeah, doing. If we're playing it. ads, we getting paid. And I'm yeah, and I'm <laughs> definitely not giving any rights away to the content to anybody. Yeah, um, this is our thing. Absolutely, this is our thing. So um, although we might consider starting to take donations or something in the future, it would be nice to get a you know something. Yeah, yeah, to, at least to cover our costs. Yeah. Um, but we'll talk with you guys about that sometime in the future. Uh, if you have any ideas, uh, Michael at the Liberty Mike. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, I guess that about covers it, right? Okay. So uh, we'll be back in a week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try and stay free. Life's short. Live free. Ciao. Later. Later.